Okay, I see. Let's go. Tony Robbins, keep pushing harder. Let me see. Keep pushing harder. Mm -hmm. Alright? Yeah. Let's go. value of your soul it's about the value of you in the marketplace there's always two pains in life there's the pain of discipline or is the pain of regret it's not what happens that determines the quality or the quantity of your life it's not what happens and the reason is because what happens happens to about everybody no different <laughs> the Sun went down on all of us last night a common event a happening and I found out that the same things can happen to two different people one gets rich and one stays poor why is that? It's because it's not what happens, but rather it's what you do that changes everything. Mm. So true. Yeah, and it's also, like, uh -huh. and also how you uh, decide to approach what is yeah. happening to you. Everybody approaches things in their own way. Therefore, you won't get the same results, mm. even if the same thing happened to. Mm to both of them you know and that is why bus uh, uh, successful business people uh you know why they become successful because they don't see you know obstacles and uh you know at bad events that happen to you they see it as an um, opportunity yes exactly yeah. and you know it's the same with memories i think we've talked about it before like uh, even if we me and you experience the same thing mm -hmm we won't be remember, experiencing yeah. the same thing no, and, even though and we won't remember it the same way either yeah what's an area of your life right now that you really want to improve what's an area that's important to improve if your body's great how about your career career's great how about your relationships intimate one especially or your hey what's up Ecos? hello Ecos. with your creator your spiritual side of your life great to have you Ecos. yeah yeah you know i've been having some technical issues so this is my way to get the chat on the screen. <laughs> you do what you can, you know. It doesn't want me to, you know. Anyways, it's great to have you. We're gonna we're gonna look at some deep deep videos uh, we picked out together to watch, and it's a uh, we're gonna see what it is. Or is it your finances? Figure an area that really matters. Decide on that area. I say to people, you got to participate in your own rescue. You've got to retool yourself. Lasting change is different than a goal. You don't always get your goals, but you always get your standards. Everybody in life gets their musts. They don't get their shoulds. Most people have a list of shoulds, don't they? Don't you have a list of the shoulds, things you should do, you should follow through on. I, I should lose some weight. I should work out more. I should make more calls. I should respond yeah. more. Yeah. That is so true. You, you always have a lot of should, 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 should. But, but you never really follow through no, on the shoulds. Until you make a should or would. Or a have to. Or, you know. Yeah, when it becomes a m must, must yeah. you do it. Mm -hmm. But then, if, if you leave it to must, then it feels like it's life pushing you to, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. I must do it. Mm -hmm. Because whatever uh, in life is forcing you mm -hmm. to do it. But if, if life wasn't forcing you to do it, then you wouldn't do that either, yeah. right? Yeah. So I should do, uh, when we say I should do, if we don't follow through on that, then uh, it will never so happen. So we should stop saying we should. <laughs> yeah, we all should. <laughs> <laughs> Rapidly to my email, whatever, you know? I should get into the office earlier. I should be, you know, more confident. Whatever your should list is, people love to have their should list make, be met, but it's kind of like New Year's resolutions. If it does, it's really exciting, but if it doesn't, which is most of the time, eh, it's a little disappointing, but you kind of know it's not going to happen. But when you decide something is a must for you, an absolute must, when you cut off any possible, you say, I'm going to find the way or I'm going to make the way. Human beings, when they resolve things, when they make a real resolution inside themselves, which is they raise the standard and they make it a must, they find the way. 
Everything in life is always changing. We don't have to work on change. Change is automatic, but progress is not. So if you want to make real progress, then you really got to look at your life in a different way. You got to say, I got to take control of this process and not just hope it's going to work out like people do who make a resolution. You know what you sh should do? <laughs> <laughs> no, you're going to think of that all the time. <laughs> no, but really what we must do. Okay, let me, let me form that. What we must do is really write down the things we should do and see which of those shoulds should or must be a must. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like uh, top five or top ten. Mm. Uh, top five or top ten shoulds, and, and you 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 mark which ones that are the must. Must, and then you have to go after that. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like yeah. that is what we must do. My mom was a powerful woman, so she kicked my fourth father out, whose name I carry. And he adopted me. And when he went out, she decided it wasn't his side, so she kicked me out too by chasing me out with a knife. And I wasn't worried she was going to stab me or anything. But I decided this is freedom. And I've got to find a way to make my life work. But I had no money. I had a 1960 Volkswagen I worked $40 a week as a janitor to buy and pay for. And so I had no car. I had no money. I had no anything. I went and slept in a person's uh, laundry room. And then I decided I've got to figure out what to do. And I needed to feed my mind because I was so depressed. I was so overwhelmed. I'm missing my brother and sister and feeling just completely out of sorts. So I, I got on a bus and I traveled 14 miles. I remember because I ended up running it one time. Uh, and I went to this bookstore and I bought this book called The Magic of Believing by Claudia Bristol. It's the first real book other than maybe Think and Grow Rich or Emerson's essays. And I started on this journey of saying, every single day, I'm going to feed my mind. I'm not going to hope good thoughts show up. I'm going to read biographies. I'm going to, I'm going to find out what makes people tick. I'm going to understand what makes me tick. And I, I wanted to read a book a day, but I didn't do that. I took a speed reading class, and I read 700 books over seven years. And they were all personal development, human development, psychology, physiology. And then what I tried to do is take anything that I learned and apply it. And then when I applied it, you know, I was 5'1 in my sophomore year in high school. I'm six seven now. I tell people the difference is personal growth. Really. <laughs> but sincerely, I, 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 I became Mr. Solution because I wanted to help everybody. So I was this little fat guy, and I couldn't lose weight, and I lost weight. And all my buddies are like, how'd you do that? And I said, well, here's what I did. And they lost weight, and we all got girls. And, and <laughs> that led to, as a young kid, you know, that led to where, you know, if you had a problem, I was Mr. Solution, especially if you're a girl, I was more motivated to help you. So the breakthrough was really understanding the power of compressing decades into days. And if someone has spent decades of their life and they compress it into a book, and you can read it in an hour or a few days, you have such an advantage because when you learn by your own experience, it's painful and it's slow. When you learn by other people's experience, everybody knows in the financial world, other people's money is leverage, right? Well, other people's experience is more powerful than other people's money because you can have the money and lose it. But if you get the experience, you can change it all. So I think that was the beginning for me and it set me on a lifelong path of hunger. You know, I've never lost my hunger. Yeah, experience is more real than money. I think we talked about this somewhere. I don't remember. Experience is more real than money. It it has more yeah. worth. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's, yeah, it, it gives you more, absolutely, than money does. Yeah, I don't know how to explain it, but it just has more worth. Mm -hmm. Because it is something that has been, uh, what do you say, actualized in reality? Mm -hmm. Like, mm -hmm. it's a thing that has... You know, you get on an airplane, what's the first thing they say? If we get into trouble, mask will come down, oxygen's there, and the first thing you gotta do is put it on your kid, right? No, why? They, who do they tell you to put it on? Yourself, you selfish bastard. What's the deal here, right? But it's because if we don't take care of ourselves, we can't take care of them. So for leaders, what I always tell them is, it's you first. It starts with you, and it starts with your psychology. 80% of growing a business, if you look at what the chokehold is on a business, it's always the leader, and 80% of that chokehold is the psychology, and 20% is the mechanics. I mean, people in this room know the mechanics and strategies beyond what anybody on earth knows in their category. So it's really about you being in the state where you execute. It's like I always tell people, knowledge is not power, it's total BS. Knowledge is potential power. Execution trumps knowledge every day of the week, and so my life is, how do you get to yourself to execute? And execution comes from learning to put yourself in that right state every day. What do these people need to get started? Why aren't they starting? We all know the answer is fear. But the difference with you guys or me or anybody who's followed through is we're more afraid 
of the, what life would be like if we don't follow through, then the person who's willing to settle for what they got and kind of hope it'll change and maybe purchase something for the moment and then not follow through on it. It's almost like people, overachievers, have a little more fear. They're a little more afraid of missing out. They're afraid of not being there or they got a strong enough reason to follow through. So I'd say, if you're looking at home, you want to give somebody some value, go, where do I start? I'm sick of this. That's a damn good place. Once you break through, then it just becomes a game. The people that are getting your products have not yet broken through in most cases. The breakthrough happens by conditioning your mind every day, by feeding it a role model or story. It's putting yourself in a peak state where you fall through by getting physically strong. It's creating a little ritual of doing a little bit each day, and then you get momentum. But the most important thing of all is what we start out with. Why? Why is it a must for you? It doesn't have to be you're against the wall, but it has to be something you're hungry for, because the only difference in people is hunger. And if you're not hungry, get around people that are hungry and something will hit you. So people can change their standard by getting around where it's better. People can change their standard by getting associated with what's true, like the bills they got to solve, the problems they got to do it. Or they can do it because they're excited because it's something new they want to take on. Everyone's different, but they got to find the why and they got to come up with some daily rituals to get them. As I said to you, look at who are your, uh, the seven people that you meet the most during the, during the day. Not the people that you like most, not your best friends that live in another city, not your mom on the other side of the country, the seven people that you are around most, and they will tell you where you are going. Yeah, you know, you have to know what you got mm. around yourself. Mm. Get them going and just do a step at a time. That's where you get momentum. People that succeed, when opportunities there, they trust. They trust, if I'm gonna thrive, this is here in my life for a purpose. Life isn't happening to me. Life is happening for me. And even this pain or challenge or this opportunity is something I'm gonna find a way to make use of. I need to make a decision and I need to do something right now to move things forward in the direction of what I really want for my life. Even if I don't know the final destination, I need to move in that direction. I need to take some form of action. Most people, they have all these visions. Maybe they start to make a little sort of decision, but they don't make a real decision because they don't act on it. And if you don't act on it, your ideas, your dreams will die in your mind. They'll die in your lips. And think about it. Most people in North America, around the world, the Western world, are they truly fit, strong, and healthy? Do they truly have a relationship that's totally passionate? Do they love their work? Are they economically free? The vast majority of you and I both know the answer is no. If you want to be like most people, then what you got to do is figure out how to survive. If you want to lead, you got to thrive and you have that capability, and you're probably already doing it. I'm probably speaking to the choir to some extent. If you're still watching this right now, you've turned me off as a raging maniac who's on a rant, because that's what I am. I'm on a rant right now, a rant to call to your soul to say, no matter how great life is, take it to the next level. Find a way to thrive on the very things that stop other people in the tracks. Thrive on what produces fear inside you and in other people. Thrive on something that you envision that you have a higher purpose for. Thrive by being decisive. Thrive by taking massive action. And if the massive action doesn't work, if what you try doesn't work, just simply try something else. And if that doesn't work, try something else. If that doesn't work, try something else until you find what works. Now you can speed that up by modeling, by finding somebody who's already getting the results that you want to get in your life. Somebody already has lost 30 pounds and kept it off. They aren't lucky, it's been five years. Somebody who started with nothing and now they're financially free and their family has an extraordinary quality of life. Why not figure out what they do? Somebody who truly is happy, not because everything's going their way, because they find a deeper meaning and a richness in everything around themselves, whether it be their children or nature or even problems. Because obviously if we had no problems, we feel dead inside. Problems can either destroy you or call you to become more. If you look at the, the biggest challenges in your life, if you brought certainty to it, if you brought a vision beyond the problem, if you made some decision of what you're going to change, even if you know how, and if you took immediate action with enough intensity, massive action, you probably found the cure-all. You probably found a way to adapt and get where you want to be. That's what thriving is really all about. But the ultimate thriving is not just breaking through and making things happen. The ultimate thriving... You know, he said, if you put everything to it, you probably find a cure or whatever, yeah. or solution. Mm -hmm. But what is it that makes people not do that? Is it the fail of, uh, no, the fear of failing to find that? Mm -hmm. And if you fail in finding that mm -hmm. solution or, or, or cure or whatever, 
you think maybe that uh, that will take you down even more like to like you won't like if you fail to find that when you really try to are you fearing that the next time you won't even try if you fail that like I understand what you mean. Like you become yeah, worse maybe. than yeah, where yeah. you started. Could I, that be? I think something like that. That you're afraid that if you try this and you fail, you will become less worth or less worthy or uh, <clears throat> um, be more unable to try it again. Yeah, you would be you would be worse off than when you started. Yeah, because if we, if we take it like uh, from a business model, you have to uh, put in a lot of money, and if you fail. All that money is lost, and you need to start over again. And how are you gonna do that? Because you also have rent, and you need to survive. So if you lose this, mm. you know. Yeah. For this year, any year of your life, is to remember the secret to living is giving. It's to, as corny as that sounds, it's to connect to. Some but I also think laziness has a big part in this. Yeah. It's not. I think what he says is true. It's fear, mostly fear. But they are connected. Fear and laziness. Uh, Something bigger than yourself, and it can be done so easily. It can be done right there at home. Instead of running past your kids, looking at your phone, it's stopping connecting. It's getting kissing your spouse in a way where those sparks happen, like when you first met. Instead of how you doing and moving on. Most of us are moving so fast, trying to manage our lives that we're not thriving. Thriving comes with depth. You're not going to find thriving in a friendship that happens in milliseconds online. Nothing wrong with it. It's great connection, but a depth of a real friendship is not your Facebook friend. It's not the same as being with somebody and actually having your full attention, not while you're monitoring what's going on on your cell phone. Just the experience of being with somebody, but contributing your caring, contributing your interest, contributing you know in a simple way, finding some way to give love, attention, care, joy, or happiness to any human being. It doesn't have to be working in a soup kitchen, but that can be pretty wonderful too. Volunteering an hour in a month, an hour in a week, can change a person's life. But it can be outside world. It can also be really on the inside world. If you want to thrive, then you got to remember life's not about me. It's about we. Mm. You already know it. It's in your soul. He said something. Let me take this shit off. He said something about. Uh, he mentioned fear. I just want to say huh? the way he, he uh, finished this was beautiful. It's <clears throat> it's not about you. It's about we. And you need to remember that, but because that is our nature. It's we. It's not I. You know. Yeah. We, we are meant to live in a we situation. We. We. Yes. Mm -hmm. But oh, uh, sorry. Yeah. He mentioned fear. You know. Mm -hmm. Uh, but he mentioned it in a different way. He mm -hmm. said those people that actually, you know, reach their goals, they have a fear of how it would, how it would be yeah. if they didn't mm. do it. So, so it's really also from, fear, so but from, it's another way. So from the beginning, it's a different mindset, even if you don't know it. Exactly. No, the people that make it. They are afraid not to make it. If they don't do this, what yeah. will happen? So both so of them are, are uh, motivated yeah, by fear. Absolutely. But it's like a two different mm -hmm. sides of fear. If you know what yeah, I mean. Yeah, but everything is fear and love. Yeah, but it seems like fear is what drives. No, that's what I meant. Both of these. Yeah, of course, absolutely. Like those who don't go after <laughs> their goals. Mm is by fear and those who go, do go after their goals is by fear mm. so it seems like fear mm. is what drives both of those mm. sides mm. situations isn't that funny yeah i mean you know but it's a dualistic thing so it has to be that way but you would think that there could be something else that is a driving force mm. love you know mm. But maybe losing a love, but that's fear. That's fear also. You know? Or not getting love, that is also a oh, fear. That is also fear because you, you, you're alone. Or the fear of, yeah, the fear of being alone. 
So basically, or the fear of being rejected. That's why you don't、uh, go out and try to meet someone. Yeah. So, so basically, everything is fear. So I think we can conclude that fear is the driving force. It's it's just how you use that fear.、Um, if you you know use it to get what you want, or you use it to not get what、mm-hmm. you want. You know. <laughs> did you say that fear? Fear is the <clears throat> what did you say? The driving force. The driving force.、Yeah. It's the fuel. And, yeah, but love is the goal. Yes, 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 yes. You could say that. Yes. But because because it goes in both way. I'm、uh, I don't do anything about my dreams because I'm afraid to failure. Because if I fail, I'm afraid to lose what I have, what I love. Yes. Because or, your or goal is not so, no, whatever. Yeah, your goal is not to get more fear. No, you already got that、so、by fear default. So fear is the fuel, but love is the goal. Yeah, everybody got fear by default. It's、mm-hmm. like it's never ending. If you you know, if、mm-hmm. you look at it, it's just there. It never takes、uh, you know. It never.、Yeah. It's like an endless, endless.、Uh, what do you say? Like a, a source,、mm-hmm. like an end. Fear is like an endless source. You can never, you can never put it out.、Mm. It's, it will always be there.、Mm. It's how you handle that、mm. shit. That is the only thing、uh, you can affect. How you handle it. Okay, on to the next. On to the next. So what is this?、Uh, let me give it a like.、Uh, Tony Robbins uh, a and a thirteen-year-old. Suicidal girl. Okay. That is some rough shit. At thirteen.、Oh. Shit. Life isn't worth living. I took the pills about two months ago, and most of it has to do with my parents. Like, I don't feel like they understand me. I just told them that I was having these thoughts, and I just wanted someone to talk to, like a counselor or something. And they just kind of like pushed it aside. Like they didn't believe me. They just thought I wanted attention. But I actually took a lot of pills, you know. And then I told my parents, "Look, you need to get me to hospital like right now, because if you don't, I am going to die." And I wanted to live, but in the back of my mind, that there was still that little voice that was like, "You don't want to live. You don't want to live." She feels her parents don't understand her, and for a woman, which she's a young girl, but there's a woman inside. Men, this is a lesson for you, for your daughters as well as the woman in your life. There's. Can you turn up the volume in someone? Turn off. Up. Ah, up.、Uh, yeah, it wasn't on the left. Nothing more important besides being loved than for a woman to feel understood. Take it back to me. So she doesn't feel understood by her parents. She feels her parents don't understand her. And for a woman, which she's a young girl, but there's a woman inside. Men, this is a lesson for you, for your daughters as well as the woman in your life. There's nothing more important besides being loved than for a woman to feel understood. So she doesn't feel understood by her parents. What's happening between your mom and dad that you want to distract them from? They do have some problems with their marriage.、Mm. So wait. So that's the first thing she thinks of that、mm. they have a problem. You're afraid they're going to divorce. I have thought that, yeah. What if they're not happy with their marriage and they choose to change that? My mom knows that they have problems, and she's tried to tell my dad. And my dad is an extremely hard person at times, and he just does not want to hear it. And sometimes I just feel um torn because my mom will try and pull me against my dad, and my dad tries and pulls me against my mom. He never used to be like that. When they first met, he was the most caring. But wait, wait, I what? No, I wanted to say that.、Um... You know, I hate when parents do that. Try to、um, take their child,、uh, put them against the other one. Like your daddy, so、uh, yeah, I know about that. that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, you know it firsthand.、Yeah. Um, I grew up with my, you know, <clears throat> my mom saying my dad,、mm. who was back in Iran, that he didn't like us and shit、mm. like that. He, you know, and that made me hate him. Because I'm a fucking、yeah. kid, I don't know. I'm like, why the fuck doesn't my dad love me?、Mm-hmm. You know, fuck him. <laughs> yeah, I totally agree. Totally agree. Because no matter what you got against your、uh, partner or husband or wife or whatever, it should not affect. 
like the kid, mm-hmm. you know. Uh, no. But I guess I guess it's stupidity, mm. right? Ego also. Ego, but and ego, and, 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 ego and stupidity are close. I think it's fair. I think it's fair, and here's why: because when you have a child, there's nothing more on this earth that you will love more. Nothing more. Even your partner, your parents, everyone is aside. Your child is the one thing that you will love the most. And when you are in argument with the one you married, the one that you have your child with, you are afraid that the child is going to pick the other one's side. And that is why you trying to tell that your child that that other person is bad. It, and I will always love you. I'm the best. That is the bad parent. Yeah. And trying <laughs> to, uh, re- to ensure uh, that the, your child is going to stay with you and not that one. Yeah. But both parents will love their child, you know, in almost all the cases, I'm sure there is exception, but will love their child um, equally as much. Yeah. <clears throat> but if, if they knew how important it is for the kid to, you know, not get involved they with should that. Knew. They should know because they've been kids themselves. They should know. Yeah, but, but they apparently they're not aware how that do- what that does to kids. You know, it permanently puts a scar. Yeah. They forgot. Maybe they didn't even knew. No, no, but they know. That's not true. No, I don't mean it in that way. But you know, the 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 simple things that you want as a child. You know. Yeah, I know, but but they don't take in consideration what kind of a, a scar it does if they mm-hmm. uh, make so one parent is favored over the other. Anyways, yeah. I'm torn because my mom will try and pull me against my dad, and my dad tries and pulls me against my mom. He never used to be like that. When they first met, he was the most caring, wonderful, loving person she'd ever met. They've been married for 17 years. So. Wow. How many of those years were they happy? Six, maybe. So half your life they were happy, and the other half they're not. Well, I wasn't born, because I've asked my mom that. I was like, did he start acting this way after I was born? She's like, no, it was about a year or two before you were born. What do you think happened a year before you were born? I have no clue. What matters most in the end? My family staying together. If their daughter's suicidal, they better stick together, huh? Genius. (laughs) There's one thing you don't understand that you don't want to hear, but you need to, and I know you're willing to, because if you look at my eyes, you know, I have a love for you that doesn't come from something you're giving me. Your mom and dad may need to be apart. I don't know. They may be miserable because they have completely different approaches to what they want for life. And they may feel trapped because they love you. As long as you're attached to that specific result, then you no longer are committed to the happiness of the people involved. It matters most as they stay together, but even if they're miserable, that they should stay out of fear and guilt until you all grow up. So they should have a decade of their life miserable. That way you won't kill yourself. And then your sisters and you can learn that a relationship is about giving up everything and being unhappy. And then you guys can all do the same thing. Ooh, that that one went in deep, didn't it? Ooh, wow. No, I was just thinking about something I hadn't thought about before. Um, My mom told me something. Before they were married, uh, she got pregnant. And my dad really, really, really wanted to have kids, and my mom didn't, so they had an abortion. And I think he blames her for that. I think she blames herself for that, too. You just came up with the answer. Wait, what? What did she say? Who? I was in a thought. Really, really, really wanted to have kids. So the dad wanted, okay. Mm -hmm. And she wanted. She didn't want. And my dad really, really, really wanted to have kids, and my mom didn't, so they had an abortion. And I think he blames her for that. I think she blames herself for that, too. You just came up with the answer to what happened before you were born. Give her a hand for that. That's beautiful. We have a choice in our life to give things a meaning. The meanings we give control our entire lives. Big problems start with little thoughts. And great achievements start with little thoughts. So you want your mom to be happy and you want your mom to feel loved. Mm -hmm. So what's the truth? Can you really control all this? No. (laughs) 
Will you ever attempt to take your life again under any circumstance? No matter how crazy or scary it is. No. Why not? Because I don't know that I'm not responsible for my parents' problems and I can't put all their blame on myself. <laughs> What, what was your sister like before she went through your eyes? And who do you see today? She was a mess before she went to the seminar. It really upset that she would try to kill herself. I mean, she's my sister. I didn't really know what to think. I mean, Must have been a tough time. Yeah, a little different today. <laughs> yeah. After she came back, it was, she came alive. <laughs> well. When she left, she was just all dark. She didn't want to be with anybody else. She just wasn't around much, you know. She just difficult. Mm. But when she came back, it's like, what happened to my sister? She was just live and just everywhere, and she was, <laughs> she was bright. Wow. And what's she like now? Happy. So basically, she was blaming herself for, for what her parents. I think most children do. I <laughs> think you did too. In a way. B without knowing it. Blaming myself. Maybe. Maybe. But... Because for, for a child, the world is so small. And when you see that world uh, full of conflict around you, and and... And you cannot do anything about it directly. You don't know how to solve it. You think you're still in the center of it because it's your perception. It's your point of view. And then I think that if the problem cannot be solved in a you know a way you know it can be solved, the child is gonna you know like fuck it. I'm gonna kill myself. Not kill yourself. I think that is when uh, children start to go wrong in life. So here she un understood. Okay. It's not uh, anything I can control, and it's not my fault. It is this way. And he basically solved uh, her problem mm -hmm. with information. Yeah, by telling her that this is not your responsibility. Yeah, because she was thinking this is my responsibility. Yeah. They need help. I must fix this or something mm -hmm. like that. Uh. When your life is in a whirlwind, you want others in that whirlwind so you're not alone. I believe loneliness is one of the greatest fears we have. Absolutely, Absolutely. Echoes. And I also think loneliness is one of the uh, most uh, harmful thing to a human being. Yeah, what because else? that is the biggest fear everywhere. Like death is you think you're, you're gonna, gonna leave alone. everybody alone yeah. uh, <laughs> you're gonna leave everyone no you're gonna you're leave gonna everybody uh behind behind and you're gonna be alone in the dark. yes that's why we fear it mm -hmm. or some people think you end up in nothingness which i don't I ever believe anymore because it's not possible and what what are you if you end up in nothingness alone mm -hmm. right exactly echoes Hey, what's up, Lupio? Hello, Lupio. Yeah. Uh, so true. So true. <clears throat> uh, but what I like with um, uh, Tony is that he he has those simple things he say, the simple solution, and that proves to me that even if human being seems complicated, we are not, and that is not a bad thing. That is a good thing. We are not so complicated. We are driven by fear, and everyone wants love. So yeah, know, that so was let, that was a good yeah, one. Yeah, so let's let's start from there. When you have conflict, when you're uh, 
uh, having problems or whatever you know start from there what is my fear and you know who was it who said what was it now uh, everybody that is miserable is lacking love hmm? right hmm. in some way hmm. lacking love or or feeling alone which could be hmm. lacking love you yeah, know. being alone is a lack right? of love of course of course <laughs> And, and you know, in that, it's so simple. Goes back to the dualistic thing again. There's only that thing: fear and love, fear and love, fear and love. Everything we're doing in this fucking place is based on those things, in a way. Yeah, that's what I mean. We human beings want to overcomplicate problems, relationships, whatever. But as long as we we are uh, overcomplicating things all the time, we are gonna make the problems bigger and bigger and bigger. Simplify them. Go back. What drives this? Yeah. Also, another thing regarding life and death. You know, I've said this to you before. <laughs> I'm sure you have. You've said a lot of things. To yeah, I can't keep track. Repeatedly. <laughs> but it's really simple. Uh, we came here alone. You know? And we leave alone. You know what I mean? When we came here... To this reality as far as we know we didn't know nobody you know what i mean yeah so, oh, what is it? Who are you? <laughs> mama okay you know and then you get used to mama and papa and brother and sister and friend and this and that so it's like you're putting things in your backpack mm -hmm. you know before you then even have you, go, you have backpack. to leave the backpack yeah <laughs> Like you stuffed it with excuse me, uh, you forgot something. What? What? <laughs> you have the biggest backpack. What? What did I forget? Give it to me. Oh. <laughs> and then you give the big backpack back. Give me your clothes too. What? Everything. Give it back. Your body. Give it to me too. I thought that was mine. He was only lending, man. Your whole life was uh, lending. Leasing. Leasing. Uh, your whole life was leasing. Okay. Next up, what do we got? Now we got Max Max Eigen. This is one of my long time favorites. Okay. This is a soul test. Mm. Soul choice. Okay, let's I see. don't know if, uh, you know. What? There's so many, so many, so many people that know about him. Who cares? No. I think it's good that we spread him. We spread him. <laughs> Let's focus, because that's all we got to do. You know, I've said so many times, if people stepped into their moral compass and they refused to comply with any legislation which caused them to step outside their moral compass, we could change the world in a single day. It's really that simple. All you have to do is remember who and what you are. Remember that you have value. Remember you're having this emotional conversation with reality all the time. You know, there's this energetic exchange going on all the time. Put yourself in the correct energetic state. No stake in the outcome. You're only here for a breath. You're only here for a temporary experience. What do you care if the world destroys itself? I mean, really, it's here for you to come and grow your soul. What happens to it after you leave is not your concern. And what happens to other people is not your concern until their actions start affecting your soul choices. And this is what this is. This is a soul choice. But you've got to remember that if you're an awake human being and you're awake to what's going on here and you're aware of what's going on here, well, you came here for this test. You made the decision before you came to come here to go through this test and to go through this exam because you know that you are capable of passing this test. And if you weren't capable of passing it, you wouldn't be here. So yeah, it's a great thing to know. It's a, it's a great, thing to think about. that is true right mm. i really believe in that that you chose your character you chose the whole potentials of that character and uh, everything that comes with it with it you chose it you came into this reality you forgot about whatever you were before you chose the only, the only problem i have with that yeah because, give it to me huh give it to me that is easy for us to say that have a quite normal life that there are children born to this world that don't even live for like a day, a week, 
two years and some of the children are you know how you say uh being uh in a horrible situation yeah yeah but and, and and for me it's you know i feel like i don't want to use the word word but it's like i'm lucky or you know but they they don't even get the time to experience life so yeah but why did they choose to come into that situation there is a po potential answer to that uh, or maybe two one is that soul that decided to choose that wanted wanted to feel that experience for for whatever little amount of time it was it wanted to do that for whatever reason maybe it was a soul that has experienced a bunch of thing and wants to haven't experienced that and wants Watch to do that people. or or it could also be you know how who was it dolores who said not everything has a soul i don't know i don't know you know maybe sometimes in those situations the soul maybe doesn't even go in the, i don't know i'm just speculating you know because I, I i can't possibly know but it could be one of those things what or maybe if our reality is in some way hacked mm -hmm. and these evil people that are controlling us are they also you know controlling it not the lives that are born but they're making sure that enough people experience horrible things uh, and um, and horrible fear if you can say that to keep this place in a, in a constant negative vibration so it's benefiting them maybe i, I know i talked about it maybe but that, uh, you know never mind but you know it's so hard to answer those you know mm. think about the fact that you you made the choice to come here to do this and if enough of us get together and get our focus pure, stop hacking each other down. This is about a soul test. This is about a soul choice. And the best thing we can do now is, is become, you know, one in spirit. Still maintain our individuality, become one in spirit. It's an interesting thing, isn't it? We want to get to a point where we're all one. And people are lonely. Often people are lonely. They don't want to be alone. And yet they want to get to a point that we're all one, we're all a single consciousness. And what happens when that happens? Well, you're all one, you're all alone again. You know, think how lonely it would be if you were part of a single hive mind. <coughs> this is what I believe Alan Watts talked about. He said, uh, uh, think about God in its uh, pure original state. Mm being just God with God itself mm. and nothing else. If, yeah. if you were God in that state, would you just be satisfied with mm. that? Or would you create illusions or whatever you want to call it? Uh, was it Watts that said that? Maybe I think it was, it was yeah, Watts. Yeah, maybe, yeah. Because Watts talked about mm. we are all part of God, uh, but we are... Uh, different points of view. Yeah, we are all God experiencing us, seeing itself from different mm. views. So it's not going to be alone. Mm. Because otherwise, God would just be alone with itself. Mm. <laughs> so not even God wants to be alone, yeah. man. Nobody wants to be alone. It would be. It'd be a really, really lonely experience, folks. Because everybody would know everything about everybody. You wouldn't have any private thoughts. And you'd be lonely. You'd be lonely. I think you'd go completely nuts knowing that every thought you were having was being monitored by everybody else. And all the thoughts that were coming into your head belonged to millions of other people as well. It'd be, it'd be, I mean, people would go insane. With what that's what's going to happen eventually when they connect everybody's brains that's, to this that's machine. That's what they want. That's what they yeah. want. Yeah. What's going on? It's just the way it is. So, yeah. 
But I believe we'll come through. I believe that the truly divine human spirit will make it through this. So, yeah, but just be prepared, folks, be prepared. We do literally create our reality. We create the reality by our emotional input and by what we do, but it's a test. This picture is called Wisdom's Dare. It's done by a very good friend of mine called Adam Scott Miller. And as you can see, the way he's depicted it in, in the picture, we do literally create our reality, but it's Wisdom's Dare. It's Wisdom's Dare. That's really what life is daring us to do. It's daring us to be wise. The only true way to really and truly embrace the light and to stand fully in the light is to be able to embrace the darkness without fear. Because it is only when you can stand without fear that you can fully stand in the light. When you can stand without fear, there's no problem in facing the shadow because in the face of the true and righteous power of universal love, there can be no darkness. In the face of the light that you can connect with simply by walking away from the fear and thereby allowing yourself to connect with the universal power and the universal conscious that we are all connected to, the darkness flees. It just does, folks. But there is a lot of darkness that people are facing. There is a lot of fear that people are facing. And I know with every fiber of my being that the way to overcome the problems we're facing is to understand the true nature of this reality, to understand the true connection we have to each other and to live in love. That's the key. That's the key to the whole thing, folks. Step away from the hatred and step away from the fear. Don't get angry with what's going on. Simply walk away from it. Put yourself in a state of love. Unconditional love, folks. It really is the key to everything. And all you really need to be in unconditional love is to understand the true nature of this reality. Understand the true nature of the consciousness that we are all part of. Understand that what is real is that space behind your eyes. That is what is real. And the energy that powers it is the energy of pure, unconditional love. That's it. Everything else is completely illusionary. But wait. Unconditional mm -hmm. love. Can I love somebody that's going to murder you? You know what I mean? But if you know that that person is you also. I know that. <laughs> But no, that that's the answer. So should I let that happen? Because I don't, oh, I don't it's not, it's me. No, I don't think you should let that happen, but to be aware that you are everyone and everyone is you that gives you uh maybe a different, you know. I know. I know. What do I you mean, want me to say? Huh? What do you want me to say? No, I'm better Just say. first. <laughs> Of course, you have to. You have to do yeah, self-defense. Why shouldn't you defend yourself? Huh? Why shouldn't you defend yourself? You should. Yes. It doesn't say you shouldn't defend yourself. No, what he's I mean saying, is, he's saying drop the hatred. But that doesn't mean that you don't think he stands up for himself in Australia now. Yeah. What? You crazy? Yeah, maybe I'm just looking at the word. Uh, yeah. Different. Uh, yeah, but I think you're uh, you're too unrelaxed. No, huh? no, 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 no. I'm just. Okay. Yes. No, I'm just saying, I understand what he's saying, sort of, but at the same time, there is a, a, a line between love and uh, It's the thing that I talked hate. about uh, with you before, when we talked about uh, Jesus. You never liked the thing that when he said, if someone hits you on the cheek, turn the other cheek to him. Yeah. It's more about, you know don't you of course you're going to defend yourself of course you're going to stand up for your right for your freedom and to defend <laughs> the family and friends that you love but they're not going to get to you 
Yeah, yeah you mean like don't uh, get hung up. Yeah, on exactly. Don't let it. Uh, no, you're gonna it? be prepared. He also said it in the video. You know, be prepared because bad shit is happening. If he didn't want you to defend yourself, he he would say, you know, fuck it, let them kill you. I know. I'm just saying. It's e- It's very easily that you you can take the the word unconditional love mm-hmm. the wrong way because it could be looked at as but okay. love okay. your killer no okay look look at this <laughs> yeah, then. Right. look at this then listen to me your mom no matter what you know yeah. she loves you unconditionally right or we can say my mom yeah. my mom loves me unconditionally you don't think she ever was mad at me you don't think she ever slammed the door in my face she fucking hits me with a you know the thing you Hang your clothes on. You know? She screamed at me. Yeah. She loves me unconditionally. Hmm. Hmm. There should only be one condition. (laughs) What is that? If you... You know, if you break the golden rules... By force, with force. If, if you, you rape force. somebody, if you yeah. kill somebody, and I'm not talking you accidentally, you know, by self-defense killed somebody or something. If you were, you know, intentionally went and did that, mm. and if you still love that person, mm. if you know that they intentionally did that, then that's just wrong. It's love cannot be for that you know what i mean i i, I cannot believe well, you don't think my mom still w- would stop loving me because i killed someone of course not well that's weird man but but that's the way it is of course she wouldn't stop loving me just because i killed someone she could be angry and disappointed and not wanted to speak with me but she will not stop loving me hmm. he's forgiving okay. Okay. loving wait huh? sorry i'm sorry guys Let's say this, you do the exact same. How? Our pig. He killed huh? thousands, not thousands, but he killed tens of birds and rats and mouse for no the cat. reason. The yeah, cat. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. You use the cat. All right. No, I'm but just going to say. I know, and, and I still love the cat. I yeah. understand. And he killed without reason. I understand. Just to but pick. the cat... But it's still wrong. It's still another life. Yeah, but the cat and a human is not the same because we have the ability to to think about these things. Okay, but I'm still going to go to my mom. A cat is programmed to kill stuff. Okay, but I'm still... My mom is not going to stop loving me just because I killed someone. She's not. But I still think it's weird. (laughs) She's not. It's weird. I'm sure people in the chat that have kids, isn't that true? Even if your children would Wait, kill someone. Is forgiving loving? Is forgiving loving? It depends, you know? It depends. The for, first of all, you have to uh, forgive in a pure way that you're actually meaning it. How could you forgive in no, a pure you, way? No, I mean, you can say, I forgive you, but then when you go home, you're going to you say, don't. that motherfucker. <laughs> so what would it take for you, for somebody to forgive for real? You, what would it you take? You need to forgive inside you. It's not I- interesting if you, of course, it's important for the other person. But the thing is not to go to that person and say, I forgive you. Yeah, but what you would that person it? need to do? Or say that depends on what the situation, what they have done. Of course. Would it be like uh, if that person who who asks for forgiveness, first of all, explains uh, for real exactly what happened and why and this and that, and is authentic when doing that? Yeah, if you're asking for forgiveness, you also need to be real. Yeah. You're not doing it just to look. But does real count? Uh, uh, suffice. Like, is that enough, or does you do you also need to really explain why it happened so that the forgiver, the ones that are gonna forgive, uh, can truly forgive? Because we used to talk about this. When you understand somebody, uh, you you it's easier to forgive. Mm-hmm. You know, when you understand what they were going through and this and that. So would one of the things be you need to honestly explain 
exactly why it happened in a genuine way. I, Otherwise, it will be hard for the forgiver to forgive them. I think that's from person to person what you demand for the forgiveness. Hmm. Okay. The ultimate purpose of love is to not be alone. Hmm. Yes, yes. Peace is the way, not the goal. Morning, everyone. Mm -hmm. Hey, what's up, wolf? Hello, wolf. Uh, I think you can forgive someone for killing a loved one. Uh, I just think it's peace. Exactly what I mean. Ourselves. Yeah. Yeah, that is what I mean. You need to do it within you. Hmm. Healing for peace is like fucking for virginity. <laughs> <laughs> Good one. Listen, I'm doing this for virginity, okay? <laughs> Leave me alone. Bring on the 16 other cheerleaders. Forgive is finding peace. Mm. Uh, some people think revenge will bring you peace, but I don't think that it works that way. No, they say revenge is poison. That's the... Uh, that's the uh, you know, cliche I think mm. you always hear in 80s movies that I killed my father, I'm gonna kill them. Mm. And they're like, no, whatever your name is, don't do it. It will only bring you back to where they are. Mm. Like you are at the same level where they are. No, I made up my mind. Leave me alone. Yeah. What's up, Kajun? Hello, Kajun. Forgiveness is letting it go and having peace mm. within. Yeah, I yeah think so but too. that's easy. That's easier said than done. Of course it is. I want to know what it, it takes to f truly do forgive. Because as you said, you can say you forgive and then you don't. But I think forgiving ha has nothing to do with that person. It has only to do with you. Yes, but I also think for you to truly forgive, you will need something from the Ask her, the one that asks for forgiveness. Mm. For me, you know, I'm not a huge talker. You know, for instance, when we argue and stuff, I'm not the one that want to speak out, I'm, you know, to talk a lot. I'm like, okay, now I know why you did this and we know why I did this and now let's go eat some dinner, you know. But some people want to talk and talk and talk and talk and talk and talk like that dude there. So I think that if I'm going to forgive someone, the main thing for me is to know that they, they, uh, you know, maybe a short explanation or something, but it's still for me. doesn't matter how long story that other person brings me. I did it because you know, this and that, and I was thinking this, and I thought this, and so I misunderstood. It, that is not important because still that person could, you know, Tell any story. Ah, so you mean still that person could be lying when yeah. saying that. So, so that well, is, well, and that uh, is why forgiveness comes only from Wait, me. wait, wait, wait. No, it goes then back to what I said earlier. Mm -hmm. I said, would the forgiver need to be presented with what happened in an authentic no, way? I don't think so. You just proved that, that uh, that's no, important. I, no, you, yes, no, you did. No, I said he can because, say whatever. Yeah, because you said he could be lying, so I don't need to hear that. Yeah. Okay, but what if he did say that in a, in a genuine way? The, still, it's the same, because the, for, if I'm going to forgive someone, it still comes from me. That person still fucked me up. Yeah, but care. you're not going to forgive him. I don't care if he did it with good intention or not. It still fucked me up. So if I'm going to forgive him, it's going to come from me. Yeah, but it's not saying I'm still gonna maybe trust that person, and you know. So, but it's for my sake I'm forgiving. So you're just gonna forgive anybody that says forgive me? No, absolutely not. Why not? Because you're not interested in hearing why they did it. Because it doesn't matter if if. You but know. but that is my ego talking. You know, Jesus said we. Jesus said we should should forgive everyone. Even the kings in the palace that had slaves. Yeah, but maybe you forgive somebody that's going to fuck you up. But I think forgiveness is rather about your peace. It doesn't have to uh, mean that you would accept that someone did this to you again. Okay, so you mean forgive but not trust. Yeah. Something like what this. What if that person wants you to start, uh, start trusting? It's an awesome feeling when you do forgive and not saying... Saying to completely forget, though. 
Yeah, yeah, that's what I mean, you know. But I think forgiveness is for your own sake. It has nothing to do with the other person. Hmm. Forgive, not forget. Yeah. Everything else is simply a product of your perception, your interpretation of what reality is based on what you've been led to believe. When you can truly grasp the concept of this and truly understand it and, and begin to realize that all of this has been proven by science now, it's even been proven by science, folks, that your consciousness is not local to your body. It's only that these last two years, science has yeah. get, gotten a yeah. big fucking hit in credibility. Let me just mm -hmm. tell you why. I don't even need to tell you why. If you have a brain, you understand what I'm saying. Okay. Science has been taking a huge hit in credibility these last two years. I don't even have to say why. All you are is a biological computer picking up one frequency from the surrounding field and you are interpreting that frequency. This is true. When it says biolo we are a, a biological computer, I used to think back in the days, like, what do you mean by we're a computer? We're definitely not like a fucking computer, right? But even if you don't want to look at anything else, just look at what they're doing with the chips in the head, right? They're somehow connecting. A, right. Okay. They're somehow connecting a microchip to the brain. Elon Musk is doing that. So uh, that shows that there is a, 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 a what do you say, a, a similarity in some way, even though it's a biological brain and a fucking silicon whatever thing that is. Can we just skip all that shit and stick with philosophy? No, no, no. This is important. I know. I know. No, 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 you're no, no, gonna wait, say wait. it, but there, it's it's. Uh, we are like a computer in a of way. Of course, of course, we are. Because when we learn shit. We're storing that and in our heart. Right? That of it, Shay. Huh? I just mean that, you know, it's always about the. My, I know we we know it's gonna happen. He mentioned we're a biological computer, so I might. Well, should I not talk about that? Yeah, but then you can stop with that. Okay. <laughs> no, I mean, into I mean, you can talk about it, but then we don't need to go into all the horrible shit that's gonna happen. And I'm not us. going into the horrible. I just wanted to co compare that we are. Uh, uh, some sort of a fucking computer because if you can co connect a fucking real computer to us mm -hmm. we are some form of computer we're just not that form of computer yeah I agree with you you know mm -hmm. uh, yeah that is know. true yeah. to reality through this body created by the one consciousness that we are all part of each one of us is simply a thought in the mind of God. When you have that understanding, when you can base yourself in empathy and love for all others and be in a state of compassion, the rest is easy, folks. The rest is easy. Don't look for external saviors. You don't have to go to healings. You don't have to go to any of these things. All you have to do is look with it. Yeah, I always were skeptical to all this, you know, healing places and you know you're gonna go and do uh, uh, spa events for the weekends and you're gonna go meditate with a hundred people I was always a bit skeptical I'm not saying they're not you know that they all are how you say just want to make money and so uh, but I just felt like maybe that's I, not always the, uh, the solution yeah, and I also it think doesn't that, have to be the same. And I think also that we have that in us already. You know, we don't need to pay a lot of money to go somewhere to find ourselves. We are here. If you if you if you cannot do it on a beach where you paid fifty thousand, you're not gonna do it. You need to do it. You know. Yeah, but at the same time, though. At the same time, though, we are looking for information from other places. Right? When I talk to you, right? Maybe you have something for Are you me. thinking about most meeting other people? Yeah. Or 
I don't know, whatever well, okay, it is. It's external like still. Okay, well, okay, we say it like this. Uh, maybe we need it now uh, because we're living so separate. Um, it's hard to, for us to find like-minded people that want the same. But back in the days, maybe it wasn't so. So then you didn't need all these things. But now that everyone is feeling so alone, maybe we are. Yeah, I'm not totally sold that you can solve everything no. just by yourself. Because if that was true, mm -hmm. then you wouldn't even need to go anywhere. I just solve it by myself. I do everything inside of myself. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I, I mean, I, I, I believe that's possible. Mm -hmm. But I don't believe that that's the only way to whatever. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes you need to go somewhere, talk to somebody, learn something from that person. Okay, I'm just, I just li don't like it that it has become such a huge business. Oh, yeah, yeah, I agree. I agree. Wait. Um, there were times I didn't have it in me to forgive. So I prayed and asked for help. When I didn't notice forgiveness happened. Mm. So when you didn't notice, it when, just when happened. You, when you didn't put attention to the... When you didn't think about it. Or you, you just uh, mm. got over it yeah. or something, right? So you're saying that praying did that without you maybe knowing that that was the praying doing that for you. Is that what you're saying, Nikos? What's so, up, Lazy Gray? Hello, Lazy Gray. Well said. Hi, Lazy Gray. Doing things in a group is more powerful. Yeah, I think so, Gotta too. Gotta agree with yeah. that. Yeah, of course. Of course it is. Of course it is. No, I didn't mean that you should sit alone. I just mean that, you know, all this spa events and guru things and, you know, there's a lot of people that just want to make money. And I think a lot of people... Absolutely. And I think also a lot of people go there because they think that, ah, oh, because I pay $50,000 and I sit on a beach and I only will eat spinach, I'm going to find myself. No, yeah. you need to do it. Only you can you do it. You know that guy who, who, who used to... Mm -hmm who, who uh, accused Michael Jackson, Wade Robson, mm, he yeah. went on to become one of those beach yeah, gurus yeah, after, after it all failed. Yeah. So yeah, you, you can definitely not trust <laughs> everybody no. like that. You know what I mean? No, it needs to come, it needs to come for you. But <coughs> it's, of course, a much more powerful and better if you are with like-minded people in a, in a group to do it. Of course. I keep getting thrown out of the live stream. The fuck Why? is that? <laughs> We're not throwing you out, lazy. What's up, Pickle Skin? I love Pickle Skin. Jordan Peterson. Yeah, he's great. I'm a couple of minutes behind. What the fuck? Uh, try to refresh. Yeah, let's continue. In yourself. Look into your own heart. And then look into the heart of another. Because when you look deep enough into the heart of another, what you'll find is yourself. This entire life experience is an exercise in free will. It's a game of freedom of choice. And it's a choice between love and fear. You know, there are some yeah, people... Love and fear. Yeah, there are some people who are saying... Uh, like, uh, one, one is called Sam Harris. Mm. He, I think he don't believe in a creator. And I believe he said... He doesn't believe in free will mm. because he said something to the extent that is it free will if you end up in a situation when you have where you where you have to do something because you're in that situation, mm. you know, and stuff like that. And I think where he's wrong is he thinks uh, we have full free will. Mm. We don't. We have free will under. Uh, what do you say? Limits. <laughs> that, it sounds weird. But free will mm -hmm. under circumstances. You know what I mean? Like, you're in a situation where there's a monster over there. Somebody threw you in that situation. It was not by your free will, but mm -hmm. somebody threw you in there, and now you have a monster there. You know? Well, now you, uh, you're fucked up. You're in a bad situation, but you still have your free will in that contained uh, mm -hmm. situation. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. that doesn't mean free will doesn't exist. It's just that it's free will with containment. Mm -hmm. What is it? You know what I mean? Like, I only believe the creator has 
ultimate free will. I like the real, mm. real free will. Like to do whatever he wants. We don't. We have limited free will. Or li uh, free will under a rule set or whatever you want to say. What free will? This stream has to be cancelled. <laughs> yes. Cancel this shit right now. There is only two emotions. Love and fear. If you won't look at the shadow, you need to understand why. If you refuse to acknowledge the negatively polarized energies in this world, you have to ask yourself why. If you are in a state of unconditional love, if you know that there is only one consciousness, then what's to fear? What's to fear about looking at the negative energy in the world and addressing it and removing it from the world mm. by making the... You see? Yeah. We're still talking about you should remove it from the world. ...choice to be in love. See, this is the game, folks. This is the game. Can we do it? How long will it take for this splintered consciousness? Isn't it funny? I was just thinking about a totally weird thing. You know, when you have a stone or something, a mountain, you cast light on it, right? The other side casts a shadow. Mm. Isn't that symbolic yeah, of the dualistic? Absolutely. Like, yeah, absolutely. That's nice. Even in that shit, mm. it's showing you light and darkness. Mm. <clears throat> to return to self, to regain self-awareness, to regain the knowledge that there's only one of us here. This is a single consciousness. And the key to unlocking this consciousness, the key to returning to self, is empathy. Yeah, that was a good one. Yeah, uh, feels really good. I think we talked, what well, we talked mm -hmm. about uh, with that. Yeah, let's jump into the next. Uh, nobody's talking about this. Okay, let's see what this is. Mm -hmm. Okay, the control grid's an interesting thing. A lot of people don't realize what they're involved in. Just the simple fact of using... Let me just read that. Uh, Life puts you in situations. Your free will is how you react, but also only to an extent. Many things influence your decisions. Yeah, absolutely. Like your upbringing, other life experience, etc. Not until you let go of all ego can you be completely free. Yes. Yeah, so, you know... Uh, I would say let go of all fear. Huh? I would say let go of all fear, then you can <coughs> be free. Mm. Yeah, and, and it goes back to that thing that uh, you have limited free will. Mm. You know? Destructive thoughts and emotions only harm the ones carrying that burden, not the ones it's aiming at. Exactly, and that is important to remember, John. Only, only harm the ones carrying. Yes. Mm. That they that you know that negative thoughts and emotion is gonna eat you up from the inside, but the other person is gonna walk and be just fine. Is it like let's say I'm a bully, you know, and I'm a bully because I uh, don't uh, have good good nice things in in me, you know. So I want to bully you. I want to bully you so, so that I get to feel better, right? But if I don't get to you, if I if my bullying doesn't get to you, then I keep the the bad shit. No, that also. But I but I think what John means is when you hold uh, when you have this, you know, uh, bad thoughts about someone like uh, I hate that person, I'm envy, a la la la. That is just gonna hurt you. It's not gonna mm. hurt the one that you're envy of or that you. Uh, mm. Or jealous or whatever, or, or or whatever you know that yeah. is simple. Yeah, things, yeah, yeah. That's true. Credit cards, using smartphones, and all of this automated system is the problem. People don't realize what it is. This this system we're being led into is the new world order in itself. The five G smart grid. Oh shit! Can we even have that? He's on YouTube. 
Yeah, maybe not tomorrow though. <laughs> it is. It's, it's, it's even his channel, right? No. But no, it's not. That you can't even have these things. Ah, oh, this is boring. Let's go to the next one. Ah. Faith over fear. <laughs> man, I love Max Eiling. Can we? It doesn't him? matter, man. He's going to talk me. about the control grid. I Everybody see. knows about the control okay. grid by now. But can we see if we find another one of Max Eiling? We don't have that much time. We got another stream coming up. All right. Uh. I was in the Green Party uh, and, and, I, and I was still working for the BBC as a television presenter and both were leaving me completely cold. You know, the uh, BBC, it's not a great organisation to work for if you care about uh, the, the truth and you care about, um, you know, more than the official version of everything. Mm -hmm. And uh, I also was looking at the, at the Green Party politics from the inside and seeing that it was just like every other party. And so I was, uh, what do I do with my life now? Because I, I, I can't go on with either of these. And what happened was a very strange thing happened because in the um, early um, part of, what would it be, um, 1989, I started having this feeling that when I was in a room alone, I wasn't alone. And it's like, this, it's like this, there was an atmosphere there. There's, there's something there. And through 1989, this, this got more and more and more powerful to the point where in early 1990, I was working for the BBC and I was, I was staying at a hotel called the Kensington Hilton, just down from the BBC uh, uh, headquarters. And I'm sitting on the side of the bed and in, in this apparently empty room and, and there, there was such a sense of a presence there that I said into the room, you know, if there's something there, would you please contact me because you'll drive me up the wall. A few um, days later, um, I'm on the seafront with my son Gareth, a little boy then, in Ride, uh, where I live on the Isle of Wight, and um, I, 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 I go into this newsagent shop where uh, Gaz was looking at one of the books, and I said to him, come on Gaz, we'll go and get some lunch in the town, and, and as I said it, it was like the atmosphere changed, like the energetic field around me changed. And all I heard, it wasn't, a, it wasn't a voice, it was a very strong thought form. It said, go and look at the books on the far side. And I'm standing there thinking, you know, basically what the, f I start walking across to the books in, in, a, in a daze, thinking what is happening? And I knew this bookshop, the books it sold were for, you know, the tourists that come to the Isle of Wight. They were basically Mills and Boone and, and, and you know, perfectly formed English roses and having relationships with, perfectly formed, you know, uniformed soldiers and all this stuff. So I'm thinking, what am I going over here for? But right in the middle of these books was one called Mind mm. to Mind by a woman called Betty Shine. A, a, a picture was on the front. It was different to the other. So I picked it up and I turned it over and I read the blurb and she was a psychic. You know what this reminds me of? This story that it's telling. It reminds me of the Matrix. Ah, uh, yeah. Like, follow the white rabbit. Follow the rabbit. Mm -hmm. You know? And I've heard this story before by David Icke. Mm way back but i remember way back that i didn't really i couldn't really buy it i was like uh, now i do i i how do you say i read his books a lot of them and i love them uh, yeah and i read these stories maybe 100 times I love it. Uh, an English psychic, and uh, she uh, was telling her life story. So I bought the book, read it in 24 hours, found it very interesting, contacted her because I wanted to go and see if she would pick up what the hell was happening around me for the last year. And um, so I went, I told her nothing. What I told her was, because she did this hands-on healing as well, which is just an exchange of energy. You know, it's not mumbo jumbo, it's an exchange of energy. Vicky. Yes, it's just an exchange of energy, that's all it is. But anyway, um, I told her that because I said, I've got arthritis, maybe it will help. Because I didn't want to give anything away what was happening to me. So I'm sitting on this bench, this medical type bench in her front room, and, you know, she's chatting away and she's doing the whole, you know, hands-on healing just next to my left knee. And suddenly the atmosphere changed again. And I felt like a spider's web on my face. Now, what hit me was in her book, she said, when other levels of reality are trying to lock into you, 
you sometimes feel like a spider's web on your face. Well, I know what that, what, that, that was now. It's electromagnetic energy. But if you listen carefully, you'll hear another voice, the voice of faith, saying God has a way. Favor is coming. Healing is coming. Breakthroughs are coming. One voice will tell you, you've reached your limits. You've gone as far as you can. You don't have what it takes. The other voice, you are well able. You can do all things through Christ. Your best days are still in front of you. Now, here's the beauty. You get to choose which voice comes to life. The way you do it is by what you speak. When you verbalize that thought, you're giving it the right to come to pass. If you go around saying, ah, oh, the problem's too big, I'll never get well. That's the thing. Yeah. You know, many people talk about, you know, thinking right. But then there is also those people who says, it's not only thinking right, but it's saying mm. it. You know? S no, we talked about that, how important it is to, to say actually, it. To say it. To say what you're going to do. Because then it's out in the, you know, in the cosmos there. Yeah. So you're creating it by saying it. And you're also putting an obligation to try to fulfill that. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So you don't become a bullshitter, not only to yourself, but to others. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So when you say it, and also they say this reality is based on, 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 on sound mm -hmm. vibration. And when you say it, it's a sound. You are agreeing with the- And that is why it's important how you say it. Mm -hmm. Wrong voice. You've got to get in agreement with God. What do you mean? Like if you say it with conviction or if you just say it loosely or yeah. what? We, you, let's say um, I'm going to write a song or I'm going to write a fucking good song. I'm going to write a fucking uh, good song. You know, yeah, like you know, that. And they say, no, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go write a song. You know? Mm. It's a difference. You're saying the same thing. But it still has different... Mm. Yeah. The other voice may seem louder, but you can override it. I think it goes the opposite way also. You can say, I love you. Or you can say, I love you. You know, there's also a difference. So I think that, I'm just taking this as a stupid example, but I think there is a situation when you say you love someone when you don't mean it, that can actually really be harmful for both yourself and the other one. Just in the magnetic vibration field. Mm. You can take away all of its power by choosing the voice of faith. Maybe you're going to a job interview. One voice will tell you, you're not going to get it. You're wasting your time. These people are not going to like you. Another voice will say, you have the favor of God. You're blessed. You're confident. You have what it takes. But if you get up that morning and tell your spouse, I don't think I'm going to get this job. They're not going to like me. I'm not qualified. There's no use even going. You're being trapped by your words. You have to dig your heels in and say, I am not giving life to any more defeat. I am not speaking lack. I'm not speaking sickness. I'm not speaking mediocrity. Not enough. I'm going to... Mm. Talking about sickness regarding the coup. Yes, absolutely. You know, maybe why we haven't got anything. Because we, we don't give a fuck. We don't give a fuck about the coof. <laughs> coof. But to those people who do give a fuck, for whatever reason they gave a fuck, maybe they became sick for real. And maybe those fuckers knew Yeah, that. and also the collective fear in this world have also made, I think, people in general to have weaker immune system and weaker yeah, that bodies. Too. That too. Yeah. It's so many different elements to everything. Thoughts or words without emotion mm -hmm. behind it are not as powerful. Mm -hmm. I like Greg Bra Braden's thought. Is that Greg Braden? No, this is your old Osteen. Osteen. Mm -hmm. I don't know, maybe, I don't know who Greg Braden is. Braden. Choose the voice of faith. It says, I'm strong, I'm healthy, I'm blessed, I'm favored, I am a victor, not a victim. When he faced Goliath, it looked impossible. All the odds were against him. If he would have verbalized his negative thoughts, that would have kept him from his destiny. Even though he was anointed to be king, those negative words would have kept him trapped in the shepherd's fields. He could have easily gone around saying, well, I know I'm supposed to face Goliath, but look at him. He's twice my size. He's got more experience, more equipment, 
more talent. I don't see how this is ever going to work out. You can talk yourself out of your destiny. Negative words can keep you from becoming who you were created to be. Don't fall into that trap. Quit calling in defeat. Quit talking about how it's not going to happen. You can pray in faith. Ask God to turn it around, to do the impossible, but then walk away and start talking about how you're not going to get well, how your child's never going to straighten up. Those negative words just canceled out that prayer. Well, Joel, I'm having this financial crisis, and I prayed and asked God to help me, but I don't see how it's going to happen. No, zip that up. Father, you said you're Jehovah Jireh, the Lord, my provider. Lord, you've done it for me in the past. I know you'll do it for me again in the future. But while we go for certainty differently, if we get to oh, Robbins, <laughs> we get what? What do you feel if you're certain? You know, what's going to happen? When it's going to happen? How it's going to happen? What would you feel? Bored out of your mind. So God, in her infinite wisdom, gave us a second human need, which is uncertainty. We need variety. We need surprise. How many of you here love surprises? You like the surprises you want. The ones you don't want, you call problems, but you need You're them. like, oh, <laughs> fuck, what is that? So variety is important. Have you ever rented a video or a film that you've already seen? Who's done this? Why are you doing it? You're certain it's good because you read it before, saw it before, but you're hoping it's been long enough you've forgotten if there's variety. Third human need, critical, significance. We all need to feel important, special, unique. You can get it by making more money. You can do it by being more spiritual. You can do it by getting... How do you become important? I mean... <laughs> How do you become... Not important, but, you know, you know, somebody wants to be important that feels not important, okay? What would that person need to do? One more time, one more time. Somebody that doesn't uh, feel important but wants to be important, what, what would that person need to do to start to be important. Accepting his fear and go on and do it. Why is somebody important to you? Because you, they inspire you. Yeah, they give you, you something. You want to be like them, yeah. They you give want, you yeah, something. They give you something. So. So then you need to give, but why do you say? Yeah, you can't be important to somebody if you don't contribute in some way with something whatever it is you need to be contributing in some way mm. to one or more per people if you don't contribute anything yeah. then you are not important to them and then you won't be important because you, you know in the old uh, old uh, Norse society here, if you didn't contribute to the village, you were out. Yeah, that makes sense. Out. If yeah. you didn't bring anything to the village, yeah. some importance or some, uh, uh, fuck do I know, something. If you yeah. didn't bring anything, you were out. But it makes sense as yeah. well. I mean, I don't care about somebody, let me say, somebody that doesn't have anything good to give in any form. Mm. I'm not talking about giving money or giving... No, no. I'm just talking about in any form. Doesn't give anything in any area. Mm. I don't give a fuck no. about that person. Right? Sure. Why would I? And, and also, even worse, those people tend to even do worse. They take. Yeah, absolutely. Not only do they not contribute anything in any area, they most likely will take mm. from you too. So how important is that person in, for me? Mm. Nothing. Mm. That's a good thing to think about. Mm. Because everything is about re reminding. And you should also think think like that when it comes to uh, friends and people around yeah, you. Yeah, everybody. Are they giving you something? You know, not, are, are you giving me Yeah, to in some, <laughs> in, 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 yeah, any, in yeah, any way. Yeah. yeah, in a positive way. Or is, is this person just draining my energy? If this person is just draining your energy, depending on, you know, how close in the situation, yeah. if, you know, maybe it's time to say goodbye. Yeah. It's important. Mm -hmm. <laughs> to think about. Oh, wait. Uh, mm -hmm. So I better fucking remember the people. Yeah. Uh, what was it? In fact, he says, it's the connection of both 
thought and emotion that actually influence the energy yeah. in the universe. Mm. The connection of thought and emotion. Mm. Yeah, and thought usually gives you a certain emotion. Mm. Like a memory gives mm. you emotions. A memory is like a thought too, right? Yeah, of course. Whatever a hell thought is. Joel Osteen. Words in the mind are like food in a blender. <laughs> it's to pick out what is what. But words spoken to a friend brings clarity. Mm. Words spoken to a friend bring clarity. Yeah, I definitely agree with, with, with the mm. food like food yeah. in a blender you have to pick what's what and also in general like uh, uh, whatever the hell a thought is but wait uh, uh, <laughs> like thought can be like in a blender you know all messy and you don't know yeah but when you speak when you speak to someone that you trust and that you love ah it becomes clear it, yeah ah. maybe i don't know if it that's yeah, that, exactly but i i'm thinking it, it, I yeah. was trying to find an example. Yeah. Like just, you know, uh, when I'm something and I, I just say to you, I just need to talk. Yeah. You know, sometimes I say that to you. Yeah. I just need to talk to get it out, you know. And we say it and we talk. And, and then suddenly I feel like, whoo. Yeah. And I know what is what. And, you know. Yeah. It gives clarity. Yeah. Somebody you can trust. And when you talk to that person, mm -hmm. it can help you clear out. I yeah. mean. Yeah, clear out Transfer your thoughts, your thoughts yeah. into... That is why discussion is so important. And that is what Tom helps. Yeah. Uh, Greg Braden has really good talks on YouTube. I really like his talk in Milan calls the Divine Matrix. Hmm. Hey, we should do that in an offline, Lazy Gray. Yeah. Uh, offline reaction then. You have to remind me. Uh, put it in somewhere, in a comment or some, something. That person would need to let go of others, of what others think of him. Hmm. Yeah, Lazy Gray might be three minutes behind, yeah, so I don't no, know. I know. What, uh, no, I think she's talking about when we, we she were talking. Or he. Uh, she, she or he. Um, about uh, the when one you... important. Yeah. Thought is an image or an idea. You can look at your thought without any strong emotion. But as soon as you feel a strong emotion, you're giving that idea energy energy hmm yeah is that like passion could you say passion uh, uh, if, if you passion. go after something with a passion yeah and I, I think it doesn't mean what what thought you know no no if it's a bad thing and you go with it with rage, that's a strong emotion. Mm. But if it's a good thing, you go with it with fucking, mm. ah, you're going to do it. Mm. That's also a strong emotion. Mm. Okay. Get yourself in a situation where you put more tattoos and earrings in places humans don't want to know. Whatever it takes. The fastest way to do this, if you have no background, no culture, no belief in resources or resourcefulness, is violence. If I put a gun to your head and I live in the hood, instantly I'm significant. Zero to 10, how high? 10. How certain am I and you're gonna to respond to me? 10. How much uncertainty? Who knows what's gonna happen next? Kind of exciting, like climbing up into a cave and doing that stuff all the way down there. Total variety and uncertainty. And it's significant, isn't it? So you're willing to risk your life for it. So that's why violence has always been around and will be around unless we have a consciousness change as a species. Now you can get significance a million ways, but to be significant, you gotta be unique and different. You know, that's a, uh, that's a different thing, uh, what he's talking about here, like if we want to get rid of uh, violence, we need a consciousness shift. That's a different thing than what the, what this uh, technological mm -hmm. movement is going for. Techno I think that's only going to bring us deeper into violence. Yeah, because this techno technological thing is trying to just uh, erase, like, uh, what do you say? It tries to just cut it off mm. so it doesn't happen. Mm. But a shift in, in, in the consciousness mm. 
that does it in another way. Mm -hmm. It doesn't cut it off. No. It's just the switching it. I don't, I don't know how to say it, but, uh, but also hate, love, excitement, mm. etc. Yes, yeah, strong, strong emotion. Yeah, I agree. What we really need connection and love, fourth name. We all want it. Most people settle for connection because love's too scary. Don't want to get hurt. Who here has ever been hurt in an intimate relationship? And you're going to get hurt again. Aren't you glad you came to this positive visit? But here's what's true. We need it. We can do it through intimacy. Yeah, it's like, okay, yeah. The danger with love, loving somebody, like, I love you. I love you. You know, that gonna, it won't, it will hurt at the end. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? But it's the same with life. You know, you come here, but you know it's gonna end. Mm. But you're still playing it. But the problem is those who still live this life, but they, they are so afraid of dying, so they don't live this life. So we talked about that before. Intimacy through friendship, through prayer, through walking in nature. If nothing else works for you, get a dog. Don't get a cat, get a dog. Because if you leave for two minutes, it's like you've been gone for six months when you show back up again five minutes later, right? Now these first four needs, every human finds a way to meet. Even if you lie to yourself, you need to have split personalities. But the last two needs, the first four needs are called the needs of the personality is what I call it. The last two are the needs of the spirit. And this is where fulfillment comes. You won't get fulfillment from the first four. You'll figure a way, smoke, drink, do whatever, meet the first four. But the last two, number five, you must grow. We all know the answer here. If you don't grow, you what? If a relationship's not growing, if a business is not growing, if you're not growing, it doesn't matter how much money you have, how many friends you have, how many people love you, you feel like hell. And the reason we grow, I believe, is so we have something to give of value. Because the sixth need is to contribute beyond ourselves. But if we don't grow as well, we, we, we stop having things to give. Yeah, exactly. You become monotone. Mm -hmm. You become a uh, repeat. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And I think uh, uh, that is the danger with this comfortable society that we live in. Because before it was, how are you going to say? It was easier to give before. Because giving wasn't so complicated. Do you understand what I mean? To help someone that needed, you know, mm -hmm. maybe uh, shelter or food or, you know, it was easier. But here in this cold world where everyone is alone, it's quite hard to give if you're not going to go, you know, to a volunteer organization, a soup kitchen and so. Because people, people that need help really don't want your help, you know. And, and that also makes, makes it backlash at you because then people will not dare to offer their help. You, mm. you know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. typically Swedish. Typically Swedish, like when I fell, you remember I told you I fell on the ice yeah. with all my shopping bags. Not a single person walked up to me. And that is not because they're bad people. It yeah. was like, I don't want to get involved. Yeah. I don't wanna... That mentality in Sweden has become so strong. You know, you talk about that, you know, this, uh, how you say, civil courage in Sweden is gone. Um, yeah, civil. Civil, that you help each other. Yeah. Uh, in the community, it's gone in Sweden. And that is because one, we don't have God anymore in this country, and two, we're way too comfortable. Yeah. And we're way too isolated, and we're way too alone, and we're accepted our loneliness, and it's part of us, and that makes it hard to give in a way. Do you understand what I mean? Yeah. But it's a complicated thing mm -hmm. what has happened to our yeah. world because In a way, your society has expanded, mm -hmm. and on the other way, it yeah. has shrink, shrunk mm -hmm. into a fucking but that is like the dualistic this. Because you cannot, you can, you, you can't have both. That is my uh, um, opinion, um, thought of it. You can't have both. Both. It's always gonna be like this. You have this, this. <laughs> You're not gonna have everything. You can't have right? the cake deep, and eat deep. it. Yeah? It's like the justice. Uh, what is oh, it? you want comfort? You want to have comfort? Here's comfort, but then you're not gonna have love, or uh, not that hard at that. But you know what I mean. Yeah. But because with the comfort that comes, it feeds also your ego. You know, you don't want to lose your hot shower or risk that you're not gonna have your internet or stuff like this. You know, mm -hmm. you don't want to risk that. But if you didn't have that, wouldn't matter. And I think 
in a way, you look at societies where you have a lot of poor people, they just say that generally the poor people are more loving, giving, more generous, more down rich, to earth. yeah, than the rich people. They're also often more happy, and I think it's the simple thing that the less you actually have and own, the more you will have to give, and the more, the less shit you need to worry about. The happier, the freer you will be. It's a hilarious place. This. Yeah. <laughs> it's a hilarious. I mean, it, there is exceptions. <laughs> like Tony Robbins is filthy rich, but he is to, devoted his life to help people. Yeah, but that is because he was himself poor. He was so poor, his family could not eat for Thanksgiving or something. Mm -hmm. And then somebody knocked on the door and said, here you go, we got some food for you. We know you, you guys are struggling. And that thing was imprinted in him that somebody could help when they needed it yeah. the most. And so when he became rich, mm. he never forgot that. Mm. He, 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 he now does that for others because, but at the same time though, he did do like, if you're going to see him speak, it's going to cost you. Yeah, but, but he is, didn't do that no, because he, he wanted to. He has a people. purpose for that. Yeah, he said, I want to know that you're committed yeah. to this. Because if you're not committed, we, we both of us are wasting our time. What, what, how much <laughs> did he take? Because he took a, a amount. lot. No, but he also huh? said he took an amount that he knows well, that if you really want, you can earn or make in a year. Something, or something like, like that. this. But it was a really lot. Wanted. Yeah, mm -hmm. but it was a lot. Okay. Because we all know corny as it sounds, the secret of living is giving. We all know life's not about me, it's about we. This culture knows that, this room knows that. And it's exciting. When you see Nicholas up here talking about his $100 computer, the most passionate, exciting thing is here's a genius, but he's got a calling now. You can feel the difference in him, and it's beautiful. And that calling can touch other people in my own life. I need to rest my ears. I know, it's fucking. Uh, question for chat. I mm -hmm. believe the soul is the mind. And the spirit is the emotion. Does anyone feel different? I totally agree, John. I'm not so sure, John. That's why I asked the question, is it for more clarity? I think the soul is the immortal energy that incarnates in a physical body. But then what is emotion? Emotion? Well, the thing is with emotion... Can I just say... Huh? I... What? Because for me, emotions are tricky. Because some emotion I think are me, but some emotion are I not. think are not me. I think I'm being uh, like when you have a period, uh, affected, affected uh, by you know stuff around me. Uh, I'm gonna a simple example with, with when the coof came. I'm, yeah. I'm never afraid of getting sick or something, and you know that. Yeah. I'm not a I'm not a, a f person that's usually known to be afraid, basically never. But somehow the repetition of it all suddenly made me like hard to breathe. Do you remember that night? In the beginning, yeah. Of it. And I was like, <gasps> yeah. I can't get any air. What the fuck is this? You and know? then I got it from you. Yeah, and then because she, I was like, shit, is he gonna? Is she gonna die or yeah. something? And that is not. I'm I'm not saying that. It was not me who was afraid. I'm just saying that a lot of emotions externally. are yeah, externally manipulated. Don't forget that emotions also are the chemicals. They are the reaction of your thoughts. That is what I was and going to say. Yeah, huh? so you can actually control your feelings. You know, there are fucking substances that can totally numb down all of your emotions mm. to make you a fucking uh, stone. Mm. Like you're almost not there. Mm. That makes me believe emotions or a big part of them could come from the body somehow or you know it's it doesn't have to be tied to your eternal because you can so you you can actually control your emotions it's hard but you actually can do it and and for me that tells me that in some way my soul and the emotions are not exactly the same thing you know yeah I know we can take we can take it with a period. I don't know if you know it's not every girl, but with 
when I have the period, my emotions is woo, 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 woo. You know, I'm angry, I'm sad, I cry, uh, I scream. Uh, but that's not really you no. who is sad. That is what I'm saying. Because yeah. I'm not a sad person, but when I have my period, I can sit and cry yeah. to anything. Gordon Ramsay. <laughs> you know? Cry to Gordon yeah, Ramsay. But I do, you know that. Yeah. So that is hard, I don't know. I think the soul uh, holds the experiences that it has made in all the different lives it has lived. Mm -hmm. I think so too. Lazy. I think emotion is a way to let us know how we stand toward a specific situation, mm -hmm. person. Hmm. Yeah, of course, the, the emotions are helping us to guide our uh, surrounding as well, you know? You say you have the gut feeling about someone or something. But could it be that there is also two, two, two forms of of emotion? Like one is one is fake, that is caused by something out of your control, and one is caused by and that's your true, yeah. inner. I know what you say inner self mm, that but that's the tricky thing with emotions Dual, yeah. dualistic mm -hmm. you know even in, in emotions maybe mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. because you know sometimes you get angry but you know you're not supposed to be that angry yeah. I mean, you know when you're that angry that i'm ridiculous right now why am yeah. i even angry you know i shouldn't be but you are yeah why am i suddenly sad that's weird very weird. I don't know. But you know, if you go back to music, music is what sets emotions as well. You know. So what is that? You know what I mean? Like, let's say you you you're perfectly fine right now, and then a, a song plays that is super sad, and for whatever reason, makes you sad now. Mm. What was that? Yeah. You know what I mean? Then you were externally mm. manipulated mm -hmm. to become sad. Mm. So, or, yeah, <laughs> it's funny. Uh, no, but emotions are tricky. I think that is one of the trickiest things. Because they also say, uh, if we go to like, you know, so purely medical, uh, emotions are chemistry in your body, the, the hormones and everything, it's just chemistry. And they say that there is nothing harder to control in your body than chemistry. And that is why it's so hard to control your emotions. But that also means that they are controllable. And mm -hmm. if they are controllable, are, are they your soul? Your soul? Yeah. Are they you? It's because true. without emotion, you're kind of dead, right? No, you cannot with uh, without I mean, emotion. How you, fun would life be without yeah, emotion? Yeah, 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 that's what I mean. That's why we don't like these fucking androids. Yeah, we want emotions. They don't have any emotion. Yeah, we want emotions. We have to have, of course. So, in order for a soul to be living, it must have emotion? Are you, are you trying to say that this, the, the, the soul needs emotion? Mm -hmm to its being, like yeah. part of its yeah, being so. is connected with emotions. Well, yeah, well, what do you say? Wait, 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 uh, I think it's 7.30 or 8. 30 or shit. 8. I went into the wrong one. Ah, again. again. Where the fuck is it? Why is it not? Uh, uh, what? Upcoming. Oh, there. In a half an hour. Yeah. So, uh. Okay. That sucks. But this was really nice. I think we're going to do another one. Yeah. 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 So step out, Lazy, but step back into the music stream. Emotion can be triggered by external things. Emotion can change in a second, but thoughts 
take time. True. That, that is, is true. true. That is true. Thoughts definitely take time, man. Yeah. Let's leave you alone. I need to think. <laughs> How long? I don't know. Just leave me alone. If I knew, I would say it. <laughs> and that's, I give you a rage emotion instantly. So you're absolutely right, he calls. Absolutely, John. Okay. But John uh, and everyone else that is here, uh, wait half an hour and then jump into the music stream. Yeah. Do whatever you guys like. No, no, uh, no if you want, I'm inviting. Sorry. Uh, yeah, everybody's welcome if they like. Everybody's welcome. Uh, see you. Shit. See you, maybe not. Uh, peace out.